Hello, this is a virtual microscopy slide of lobular carcinoma of the breast with associated lobular carcinoma in situ or LCIS. On this low power view, we can see that it is not as well circumscribed or well defined as invasive carcinoma NST, no special type, or invasive ductal carcinoma. This kind of has a more subtle appearance and is a bit more difficult to make out the outline of the invasive tumour. Hence, the clinical presentation is usually not that of a very well-defined hard mass. It presents more of an area of thickening or induration, and sometimes it is also not so well-defined in mammographic images. We can see that there are some benign breast lobules here, and there is some inflammation, lymphoid infiltrates within the lobules, within the intralobular stroma, but there is no evidence of tumour here. Moving down to the more abnormal area, we can see some of these rounded structures, which are the expanded native breast ducts filled with neoplastic cells, and these are areas of lobular carcinoma in situ, or LCIS. Usually in LCIS, when compared to DCIS, the cells tend to be a little bit more monotonous and smaller, and the nuclei less pleomorphic. Also, we don't tend to see openings or cribriform openings as we often see in DCIS, in particular in cribriform type DCIS. Here is a comparison of LCIS on the left and DCIS on the right, shown at the same magnification. And you can see that in DCIS, the cells are more pleomorphic, with more variation in nuclear size and shape, and they are also larger. This particular case does not show a cribriform architecture, but cribriform architecture is common in DCIS and generally not seen in LCIS. Moving on to the invasive tumour, we see infiltrates of discohesive single cells. Sometimes they occur in cords like this, as well as this. And they have been described as having a single foul arrangement. And sometimes they also occur in concentric formations around benign ducts or areas of LCIS. And in this particular case, this is not well demonstrated, but you can sort of imagine that they form these concentric rows around native structures. In this particular case, some of the cells are also arranged in trabeculae, which are slightly broader cords of two or three cells thick. And usually in lobular carcinoma, there is loss of e cadherin on immunohistochemical staining. That is a membrane stain, and this gives rise to the very discohesive appearance of these tumor cells. It can be occasionally challenging to recognize these malignant cells because they can be sometimes singly dispersed, sitting within the breast stroma. Hence, it is important to look carefully for these cells. You will also notice that the nuclei tend to be a little bit less pleomorphic in general than those of ductal carcinoma or invasive carcinoma of no special type, and also the cells are smaller. This particular case also had nodal metastases. And here is an example of an axillary lymph node from this patient. And we can see that this is the normal lymph node with the capsule and the subcapsular sinuses. And sometimes metastatic lobular carcinoma can be very subtle, especially on frozen section examination of sentinel lymph nodes. However, in this particular case, there is an obvious tumor deposit with associated stromal reaction or stromal desmoplasia. Here we can see these malignant epithelial cells infiltrating into the stroma, and there is a marked desmoplastic stromal response with these spindled myofibroblasts, and also some inflammatory cells. And we can recognize these metastatic carcinoma cells 
because they are larger than the lymphocytes. This is a page from our Virtual Pathology Museum in our free online pathology resource path web. You can see the maneuverable virtual pathology specimen. And if you scroll down, you will also be able to see annotated microscopic pictures of both invasive ductal carcinoma and also lobular carcinoma. And you can compare the appearance of lobular carcinoma to that of ductal carcinoma. In summary, here is a case of invasive lobular carcinoma where the malignant cells are relatively small and uniform. They are not arranged in solid nests as you see here on the left in this example of invasive ductal carcinoma or invasive carcinoma of no special type. Instead, the malignant cells in lobular carcinoma are arranged either singly or in cords. And here is an example of metastatic lobular carcinoma in one of the axillary lymph nodes where you can see the individual dispersed cells that are infiltrating into the nodal parenchyma that look similar to the primary lobular carcinoma. Because of the discohesive nature of lobular carcinoma, they often do not form as well-defined masses grossly as in the case of ductal carcinoma. And finally, lobular carcinoma cells are usually positive for ER and PR, and they are usually negative for HER2. Thank you.